So it's not really fun to report on people losing their jobs, especially if you think these people in question deserve it. I know for a fact because I've been unemployed and lost a job before too. It's never fun because you have to go through the process of figuring out how you're going to pay your bills. If you get unemployment, that's still less than what you was making before, maybe by half. I know this isn't like COVID time where we was getting more from unemployment than we was from our actual jobs, which that would be nice. Um, but the fact is, it's really hard, uh, especially if you have rent, you need medication, uh, you have to get groceries, insurance, or if you have a kid, something like that. It really sucks because you have to figure all this stuff out, and there's a lot of stress that goes along with it. And lately, if you've been paying attention to the gaming industry, and let me go ahead and say this is not the, just the gaming industry, but right now I'm covering the game industry because it's something I really care about. Now, you've seen a lot of these big publishers and studios. Example would be Microsoft spending $70 billion on the Activision Blizzard merger, which was one of the biggest mergers ever in tech and afterwards a few months afterwards people started losing their jobs uh, tango gameworks one of the studios that i really really like that brought out one of the best games of last year hi-fi rush they got shut down um and it sucks it really does suck because you have a lot of people that dedicated their lives uh, for working at these studios doing the things they love and it really hurts to lose a job that you love, you plan on making it your career, and get just basically put on your ass because a billion dollar company that has record profits decided to make a bad decision and make you lose your job. So you have to suffer for what they, the decision they made. Now, it's not just the gaming industry as a whole when I talk about publishers and studios and stuff like that, but it's also trickling down to game journalism. Now, to me, I think game journalism has not been journalism in a long time. Um, they shifted the focus from video games, which is why we would go on a site, and I can go ahead and test for this. I used to use Kotaku Daily, and yes, that's who we're talking about today. Uh, I used to hop on there every day. That used to be one of my main tabs. It was between Kotaku, GameSpot, System Wars forums, and NeoGAF. Uh, this is before I discovered Reddit and stuff like that. And Kotaku was a source that I really like and trusted. But there was actually a change in the gaming industry, especially the journalism part portion, where we started adding things like politics as well as... DEI, which I don't care, diversity is what it is. Um, I've never played a video game and been like, oh, diversity! I, I never did. It wasn't something I thought about. Because how I see it whenever I play a video game, any video game, I'm using that as a place to stretch my imagination, get away from real life, because let's face it, real life sucks right now, and I just want to escape. And that's one of the forms of escapism that I've used, as well as many people. Now, when you start inserting things like activism, as well as propaganda dedicated to a certain side, and there's no real balance, and the people that are writing these articles come out and hate, say they openly hate you or don't care about games, like Alyssa Mercante, Mercante um, it sucks. But here's the thing, something that happened today, uh, over... Kotaku, by the pedestrian group, I'm sorry, um, they run things like Vice, Kotaku, Refinery29, um, Lifehack, I think Gizmodo, uh, several of these uh, journalism sites. Uh, a lot of people lost their jobs today. I think it was maybe maybe 20 some people, maybe more. I'd say there's a whole lot more, um, but it, it sucks because they lost their jobs. Um, but they closed down the whole division in Australia, uh, that specific uh, group, the pedestrian group, which a lot of people probably think of the same thing I am. They're probably thinking, that's not a surprise. Um, we expected that a long time ago. And the truth is, a lot of people, especially me, we take a look at gaming journalism and we're just not interested anymore. Uh, especially when the fact you have people writing articles about putting a butt plug in your butt that connects your Switch 
and I, I I actually watched Yellow Flash talk about this. I forgot this even existed. Um, <laughs> to, <laughs> to play Animal Crossing on your Switch, I don't know what happens. I don't know if the butt plug like vibrates or something, but um, that happens. Then you have uh, latest cases. I mean, it's all it's all bad because basically every article that comes out has something to do with like diversity and inclusion and people, white men are bad and you know all that stuff and whenever the people call it out on they try to turn it around as if they're the victim or play tactics like having their audience what they have you scare tactics like doxing or contacting your job which is not cool it's not a good way to handle criticism and it sucks. It really does suck because, you know, I'm sure a lot of people that work there, especially in the, the Australian vision, they probably wanted to make a career out of it. They wanted to spend their rest of their days working for Kotaku. Maybe they wanted to do the uh, political stuff. And maybe that's something they was glad they was doing. But the truth is they lost their jobs because, hey, they started pushing something that wasn't really what gamers wanted. And at the end of the day... The customer is always right when it comes to giving them what they want. Um, and this, we've seen this in the past where, you know, game studios, let's say Battlefield, uh, I think it was Battlefield 5 when it came out. I think I've mentioned this before, but one of the guys, the developers basically said, hey, if you don't like us putting women in our World War II game, don't buy it. And what happened? People didn't buy it. So it's kind of one of those things you reap what you sow and it sucks because a lot of people that probably had nothing to do or wanted anything to do with activism or propaganda, they lost their jobs anyways just because a few jackasses decided to turn something that people loved into just a propaganda pushing website. I, hate to, I keep on saying propaganda and activism and all this stuff and I mean it's true, it's very true, it's throughout the whole industry. Uh, you have people that's calling it out, and honestly, I think there needs to be more of that. I think, hey, you need to take a stand if you believe in this and do it. Now, here's the thing. Me can't calling it out being a white guy. They're going to automatically assume, like, hey, this guy's a Nazi because I've been called that before just because I'm white, which, again, that's racism because, you know, you're judging me because of the color of my skin. But for some odd reason, white people, that's not a race which is a stupid fucking thing to say. Uh, but yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, man. So one of the uh, people we've talked about a few times on here, and she actually works for Kotaku, and I made a video about her a couple times, and that's Alyssa Mercante. So let's switch over to here on her Twitter. Uh, that way we can kind of talk about it here. So she posted this today, which was kind of a bit cringe. So she said, you have no... I idea what journalism is your website looks like it <laughs> your websites look like they're from 2001 they're riddled with typos you use yourselves as source for stories you have an internet connection and a webcam i think you have something worthy to say you don't we could set my nana up with a razor kayo in her care home and she'd make more coherent shit now I have a Razer Kayo. Thanks for the plug. I hope you're not getting um, sponsored by Razer, but that's what I use. I use that. Here's the thing, Alyssa. You know, you made an article recently about the review for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. Now, here's the thing. Whenever I hop on, I'm just like, hey, I want to know about the game. Is it any good? Tell me the mechanics. What's good? What's bad? Instead, it was a self-insert when you're basically trying to say how miserable you are because how you are, which is fucking insane. Like, literally an insane person. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, you're not going to fight me anyways because you'll just kind of run. Um, and that's fine. I know you're a fat white male Nazi. Get out of here. Um, yeah, it's fucking stupid. Really fucking stupid. Like, really fucking stupid. I'm just going to tell you. It's just really stupid. Um... Yeah, like, here's the thing. People like content creators because it gives them an option to, hey, I want to trust this guy that literally plays video games 
that actually wants to talk about the video games and it's not going to push some kind of political message on me. So yeah, let's watch RGT and as well as several other people like game streamers and whatnot. Some of them are pretty bad. But there's a lot of actual content creators that make gaming content that people want to watch. Legacy media is dying, uh, if you think about it. Like, it goes out like a newspaper. And modern internet, for the most part, is going away, too, when it comes to just gaming journalism sites and just other sites. Especially when you put these things against a paywall. A lot of people don't want that, either. Um, but here's the thing. If Kotaku... Um, wanted to keep their audience, they would have switched their focus back from act activism and propaganda straight back to gaming, what people would want. You could do your own thing on the side. Sure, there is actually room for it. If you wanted to make your own little thing, do a, be a content creator and spread your shit, that's fine. You could do that. But I don't understand why uh, the gaming media has to listen to that when people just want to escape from everyday life. It doesn't make sense to me. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that's all for this shit. It's like, why are you hating, bro? Why are you hating, bro? Uh, DEI, blah, blah, woke stuff, you uh, white, fat dude. Um, I know I know what to expect because people do that. I don't really care. But I just don't understand. I, I don't understand. Like, it, it sucks to see these people lose their jobs. I, I really hate that. I hope that you get on your feet. And I knew that there's some people saying they want Alyssa Mercante to lose her job. You know, I don't want her to lose her job. Um, I really don't. Here's the thing. As somebody who suffers from severe bipolar depression, losing your job fucking sucks. Like, it's actually bad because you have a lot of things you need to do. And, you know, things to pay for. Your rent, blah, 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 whatever. Your groceries, whatever you need to do to not end up on the streets. I don't want that to happen to Alyssa Mercante. Like, I really don't. Even if I disagree with Alyssa, I still don't want her to lose her job or her livelihood. Then again, she can go back to OnlyFans. I'm not sure how much she was making on there. She does say she's hot, sexy, and smart. Um, you know, there's there's a market for that. There's a market for that. And, you know, you probably did good there. Good for you. Capitalism. Um <laughs> But I don't want I don't want Alyssa Mercante to lose her job. I really don't. I I, I really don't. Uh, maybe if she was able to switch to something that she loves, because I think a lot of people step into gaming journalism to try to move to something different, um, especially uh, when their main focus is activism. Because, like I said, a lot of the articles anymore or reviews is just mired in some activism or something. But like I said, I don't want Alyssa to lose her job. I really feel bad for the people at Kotaku. Um, some people might disagree with that statement. Uh, that's fine, but I'm just trying to look at it as a fair way uh, because I've been on the receiving end of losing a job, and it's not fun. Um, for the people that lost their job at Kotaku, I hope you the best. I hope you get back on your feet. Um, if you are planning to get back into game journalism, maybe not talk about politics as well as any other activisms. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.